How do we find the missing leg of a right triangle? Um, well, when you're given two of the sides, it's pretty easy to just plug them in and um, solve for the remaining um, side that's that you need. Uh, let's go through and actually find our hypotenuse. It's always the side opposite of the right angle. That should be uh, old review at this point if you watched my first video. And uh, we're going to do something similar to what we did for finding the hypotenuse, but this time it's a leg that's missing. Um, and so let's go through and let's just put our values in and go solve. Um, in this case, um, I want to say this is leg A, this would be leg B, and this would be our hypotenuse, C. And so now that we've labeled that, you can do that in your head, we just go and we, we start plugging them in to the values. C was 13, so that becomes 13 squared. Um, at this point, B right here was 10, so uh, this becomes 10 squared, and we're trying to find A in this case, so I just leave it as A squared. Don't forget the plus sign that's sitting right here. Um, go through and simplify what you can, you know, take care of the exponents. And now you've got to ask yourself, how can I solve for uh, this variable right here? Well, it's not too bad. Really, all you have to do is uh, solve it like you would any other equation. Isolate the variable, you know, if we're adding 100, subtract it from both sides, we get 69 equals a squared. And then on the last video, I taught you how we can get through this situation of when a variable is raised to the second power, what that lets us do is rewrite the equation as if it was a square root sign on the other side. And so now we can pull out our calculators and find out what the square root of 69 is and round to the nearest tenth. And after rounding to the nearest tenth, we see that A is about 8.3. Now, um, if you're dealing with a problem that actually has units on there, like if this was 10 feet and this is 13 feet, please don't forget, after all that hard work, to put on the correct unit. Um, at this point, I would pause the video and see if you can find, um, in this case, the missing leg. Okay, here we go. Here's the legs and hypotenuse shown. And now we just need to plug them into the formula. Go ahead and simplify your exponents. Get the variable all by itself. So you'll see the a squared right here. It's having 25 added to it. So we basically need to subtract 25 from both sides. That keeps the balance of the equation since we're changing it. But it uh, basically makes the 25 0 on the right side of the equation, which leaves us the a squared all by itself, which is what we wanted. And then 81 minus 25 would be, I believe, 56. Let me double check that real quick. Now, I might have just said 26, but it should be 56, so if I did, I apologize. So 81 minus 25 is 56, and then again, it's that last trick I taught you, rewrite the equation with the square root sign on the other side, and that lets us be able to take the uh, second power off, um, because basically it's, it's the same question. When we look at it right here originally, we're asking ourselves what number times itself equals 56, and here, once we put the square root sign over 56, we're saying what number times itself will equal 56, so it's the same question, just kind of repackaged, but it lets the calculator do the heavy lifting for us, and we know that the square root using a calculator is rounded to 7.5, so um, A is approximately um, 7.5. I've got uh, two more problems I want to show you real quick. Uh, these involve decimals. Go ahead and pause the video and see what you can do with this, and then we'll take it from there. Here's the hypotenuse and leg uh, shown for you. So you can see the, the unhighlighted side is our missing leg. Go ahead and plug these values into the formula. Then after you've gone ahead and taken care of the exponents, get the variable by itself. And after that subtraction is taken care of, go ahead and get the exponent off of the variable using the radical sign or the square root sign. And then you just use your calculator to finish it up from there. Um, I like to round to the nearest tenth a lot of times, but always pay attention to what um, the question is asking you to do, whether it be round to the nearest tenth or hundredth. Um, shouldn't be 
that big of a deal. And I haven't really noticed, well, I have noticed, but I haven't mentioned in this video until now that when you're trying to solve for the leg of a right triangle, make sure it's smaller than your hypotenuse. The hypotenuse always has to be bigger. It doesn't have to be a lot bigger, um, but it does have to be at least a little bit bigger. It can't be the same length. It's got to be bigger, and 5.3 is definitely bigger than 4.9, so we're fine. Uh, I've got one last problem for you I'd like you to try. Go ahead and run it through. Um, I pause the video and then just hit play when you're ready to check your work. Identify your hypotenuse and leg, and then you can plug them into the equation appropriately. This time I'm actually going to uh, put the, the leg into the, the A slot there, so to speak. Um, so watch what happens here. It really doesn't matter. Um, I've been putting it into the B side, but uh, I saw this leg first, so I'll call this one A, this one's B, and this one will be C. Um, and now we just go solve for B. It looks a little different, but basically we're doing the exact same thing uh, that you've seen us do before. And then, again, we just rewrite the equation to get rid of the exponent. And we're left with B, and the calculator tells us the 86.8, or the square root of 86.8, uh, rounds off to about 9.3. So um, there you have it. Um, do that check again. Is your leg smaller than your hypotenuse? Yes, so that's a pretty good indication. And um, if you plug all three sides back into the Pythagorean formula, you'll get uh, an answer that's pretty close to being equal to each other. Um, but remember, you're having to round uh, on this last part, so it's not going to be a precise, perfect answer.